uh, welcome back to this next video and in this video we will continue the uh, discussion on the composition of the saliva uh, in the last video I've told you that 99.5% uh, of the saliva that is water and beside the water there are also other components present in the saliva uh, the uh, one of the important component of the saliva that were the electrolytes which are present in the concentration of millimole per liter and different electrolytes like the sodium potassium calcium chloride uh, magnesium and carbonate that are present in the saliva and the major function of these electrolyte is to work as buffering agents so that the enzymes that we will discuss in this video they can have an optimum environment for their function another important component of the saliva that we discussed that was the uh, mucus or the uh, mucin which is released by the mucus cells of the salivary glands now the mucin, I've told you, that is a heavily glycosylated protein. That means that when the mucin, they are formed uh, after their formation in the process of post-translation modification, the carbohydrate moieties that are added to them, and the carbohydrate moiety that is added to the mucin protein that would be that belong to the family of the glycose aminoglycans. And these uh, mucin, as I've told you, they are actually working as lubricating agents. Uh, they are having protective functions and they help the uh, food uh, in easy swallowing of the food. Uh, then I've told you that the glycose aminoglycans, uh, they are repeating, uh, uh, they are polysaccharides made up of repeating disaccharide units and the components of the uh, and the uh, components of the disaccharide unit, they come either from the amino sugar or from the uronic sugar. Then I've told you that there are also glycoproteins present in the saliva and the function of this glycoprotein is uh, to work as a lubricating agents because they have the ability to retain water. Now in this video, we will focus on the uh, important enzymes that are present in the saliva. So the first important enzyme that is present in the saliva that is known as the uh, alpha amylase enzyme. Now this alpha amylase enzyme that is actually uh, released by the serous cells of the uh, parotid and the submandibular salivary glands. So these two types of the major salivary glands, they are the producer of the alpha amylase. Uh, if you simply define the function of the alpha amylase, these alpha amylase are going to uh, convert the starch which is present in the food into simple sugars. Now, the optimum pH for the alpha amylase that is present in the saliva, that is 7.4. And the different electrolytes that are present in the saliva, they actually ensure this particular pH so that the alpha amylase can perform its optimum function. Now, if you take a food that is rich in starch, like the rice and potato, so even before swallowing this food, uh, you feel a sweet taste. Now the reason is that as the rice and the potato, they are rich in starch, so the alpha amylase convert some of the starch into glucose, thereby giving you a sweet taste. Now if you look uh, into detail how this uh, alpha amylase work, so when this alpha amylase is actually responsible for hydrolyzing the dietary starches, the starch that is present in our diet, and this alpha amylase convert the dietary starch into di and trisaccharides. Now, our body cannot utilize the di and trisaccharides uh, as a form of energy, or you cannot, the body cannot utilize the di and trisaccharides uh, uh, into energy. So there is an, another enzyme, which is known as the amyloglucosidase. So the amyloglucosidase that acts on these di and trisaccharides and when this enzyme acts on the di and trisaccharides, these are converted into glucose, which is of course a monosaccharide. And th then this glucose is used by the uh, body uh, for the uh, energy production and performing different kinds of the uh, uh, physiological functions. If I give you uh, like some of the examples where the uh, disaccharides that is converted into the monosaccharides. So the uh, famous example is the uh, conversion of the maltose. The maltose is a disaccharide which is made up of uh, uh, glucose. 
uh, two monomers of the glucose so when they combine with each other you are actually getting a maltose so the amino glucoside is that can act on the maltose converting them into uh, glucose in their mono in the monosaccharide form and then the body can actually utilize them uh, as a source of energy uh, another important example that is the uh, lactose and the lactose again is a disaccharide and this uh, lactose is made up of uh, galactose and the uh, glucose so uh, what happens is that when the amino glucoside is that acts on a lactose it is converted into the monosaccharide and galactose and into the monosaccharide glucose which can actually be utilized by the body for the uh, uh, production of the energy uh, another important enzyme that is present in the saliva that is known as the uh, lingual lipase. Now the uh, lipase, uh, these are the enzymes, these lipases uh, which can act on lipids and thereby causing their breakdown. Now, if you look at this particular lipase, this is the general function of all of the lipases that are present in the body, that they act on the lipids, thereby causing their breakdown. But if you look at this term, lingual lipase, so when you use this term lingual with this lipase, this means you are specifically talking of the lipase that is present, that is uh, produced in the uh, oral cavity or that is produced by the uh, cells that are present in uh, your oral cavity. Now this lingual lipase, it is actually produced uh, by glands which are present on the tongue, thereby performing their particular function. Now the uh, lingual lipase it is also uh, produced by the uh, sublingual glands, the sublingual glands or and these uh, lingual lipase is also produced by the uh, specialized glands which are present on the tongues. Is you're talking about the enzyme so as I've told you that if you talk about the uh, fluids that is rich in enzyme that is actually produced by the serous cells so the uh, sublingual glands uh, the serous cells of the sublingual glands they are going to produce the uh, lingual lipase now if you uh, look at the uh, optimum pH of the uh, lingual lipase that is around 4 and the optimum pH is 4 now the uh, pH of the uh, oral cavity that is not 4 because 4 is an acidic pH and the uh, pH usually present in the uh, oral cavity uh, or you can say in the mouth that is usually neutral. So the lingual lipase that is produced by the tongues or the uh, serous cells of the sublingual glands but because of this pH constraint they perform their activity in the uh, stomach because in the stomach they have an acidic pH so they are not activated until the uh, lingual lipase they reach the uh, stomach part. Now this uh, lingual lipase it uses uh, a catalytic triad by that I mean that there are three important amino acids one, at the, uh, one is the aspartic acid uh, which is present at position number 203 of this enzyme. Another one is the uh, histidine, uh, which is present at position number 257. And another one is the serine, which is present at position number 144. So as we are talking about the triad, so these three enzymes, they are making a catalytic triad and this catalytic triad is actually going to uh, initiate initiate the uh, hydrolysis of the lipids. So this is the uh, catalytic triad responsible for initiation of the hydrolysis of the lipids. Now during the hydrolysis, the uh, trigalicerides, the trigalicerides they are actually converted into the uh, gallus rule and the uh, free fatty acids 
the free fatty acids. So the lingual lipase, when it uh, utilizes its uh, catalytic triad, that is going to convert the uh, triglyceride uh, into the cholesterol and the free fatty acids. And then these free fatty acids, they've got a variety of function uh, in the body. But as this is not the scope of this video, we are not going to focus on the uh, different functions of the free fatty acids uh, in the body. Now, these uh, the lingual lipase, uh, they are very active against the uh, short chain triglycerides. The short chain, uh, you can say triglycerides. Uh, for example, the uh, triacylgalacerides uh, that are present in the milk fat, they are usually uh, broken down or uh, the hydrolysis of the uh, short chain triacylgalacerides present in the milk fat that is actually carried out by the uh, uh, lingual lipase. Now, uh, apart from these enzymes, there are also important uh, antimicrobial enzymes the antimicrobial enzymes that are present in the saliva and the important uh, antimicrobial enzymes that are present in the saliva that includes the uh, lysozymes uh, another important one is known as the uh, salivary salivary lactoperoxidase salivary lactoperoxidase and another important one is the uh, lactoferrin. So these are the important antimicrobial enzymes uh, that are present in the saliva. And we will discuss about their function in detail in the next video.